Learning and studying, does it ring a bell? Personally, every time I hear Russia, the Soviet Union, when it comes to the history of Russia, those are the first two names that come to my mind. Let's dig deeper into the relationship between Lenin and Stalin and how it shaped the Soviet Union. Maybe we should start with the birth of the Soviet Union first. Let's go. USSR actually means Union of Soviet Socialist Republic. For short, we usually say the Soviet Union. It actually emerged from a civil war, a civil war between the Bolshevik headed by Lenin and the anti-Bolshevik. The Bolshevik constitute what was called the Red Terror and the anti-Bolshevik constitute what was the White Terror. So we had the Red Terror on one side trying to create the Soviet Union and the White Terror on the other side against the ideology of Lenin at the time. Their opposition led to a revolution in 1917. The Bolshevik Revolution of 1917 started a war won by the Bolshevik. At the end of the war, Lenin was able to create the Soviet Union or USSR. It was officially established December 30th, 1922. At the time, the Soviet Union was made of 15 different countries. I'm going to attempt to pronounce all of them. I'm sorry if I mispronounce any of the country, but the name will be listed on the screen. So, Russia, Ukraine, Georgia, Belarusia, Uzbekistan, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Moldova, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. The capital was Moscow, currently the capital of Russia. It was the largest country in the world. It actually took over one-sixth of the Earth's land surface at the time. It was also extremely diverse far, as far as all of the nationality living on the territory at the time. It also was officially the first country based on Marxist socialism. The government and economy were highly centralized and it was governed by one party, the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. So, as I said before, Lenin was the head of the Bolshevik. But Stalin wasn't really too far. So what was the relationship between the two men? Both of them were re rival. Even though Lenin was at the time way more powerful and was, the, and was the head of the revolution, Stalin was a rising party leader. And they had opposite views as far as their political vision, the statecraft, and it went as far as ins insult and gr holding grudges against one another. Their relationship was um, highly tense and definitely they definitely went in too many clashes and issues. In the last days of December 2022, the new state of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republic was created with Russia and the Republic of Ukraine, Belarus, and what was at the time called Transcaucasia, which is currently Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia. So those were the of original countries that made up the Soviet Union in December 22, when it was officially established as a nation. There were many disagreements between Lenin and Stalin. The main issue was the fact that Lenin desired to create a union of Soviet Republic all equal but with separate government bodies. Meanwhile, Stalin believed in incorporating all of the former independent republic into the Russian Soviet Federation with some rights of autonomy. With Russia government as the central institution of Soviet rule and basically exercising control over all of the formerly autonomous republic, Stalin ideas were opposed by most of the republic, including Lenin. Ukraine and Georgia especially rebelled as Stalin was trying to force his ideas upon everybody. He kept trying to push, but it was stopped by Lenin. And at the time, Lenin was just too great in the party and Stalin had to back down. So in December 30th, 1922, the first All-Union Congress of Soviet declared the birth of the USSR based on Lenin principle. Unfortunately, around the same time, Lenin suffered a stroke. And the crazy story behind the stroke is that it followed a fight. So even though Lenin pushed and most of the other republics were against Stalin's ideas, 
Stalin was still trying to impose his idea. He was sending people of the parties who were on his side, people who were supporting his ideas, to different parts of the USSR to change people's idea, actually to force people to change the idea. And he went as far as using force, beating people, fighting against people. Obviously, Lenin was completely against acting this way and was completely against the use of violence. So he had a discussion with Felix Desinski. Sorry for the pronunciation. He was the head of secret police at the time and he was a fervent supporter of Stalin's idea. And he was sent by Stalin to Georgia to convince people of adopting his idea. But in reality, they were actually trying to crush the opposition and fighting people. Things literally went left as Felix beat up one of the opponents. Lenin was so mad when he heard about what happened that the discussion with Felix became an argument and following up the argument, he had a stroke. The crazy part of all of this is also that most of the opponent, including Felix and Stalin, were not even originally from Russia. Stalin is from Georgia. And Lenin really felt like people from the Republic who were now living in Russia and had even more Russian pride were the worst because they were trying to crush the other republic and basically put in place just a total russian power total russian takeover preventing other nations to actually have any type of autonomy and it was definitely something he was trying to fight against unfortunately with the stroke he wasn't able to attend any meeting and stalin who was already rising in the party used his opportunity to ban him from attending any more meeting and from meeting with any member of the party. He used his health issues as an excuse, talking about the fact that he needed to rest, but in reality, it was the perfect opportunity for him to take over and put in place everything he wanted to. So as Lenin was trying to recover from his stroke, he, was still, he still wanted to fight against. So he wrote letters, and the main letter was called On the Question of Nationalities or Autonomization. It was finalized December 31st. In those letters, he attacked Stalin's policy and he deemed them completely inadequate to stop the rise of the great Russian nationalism and felt like they were definitely a threat to the unity of the state. Stalin made sure to keep letters secret from the rest of Congress and completely barred Lenin even more. At that point, Lenin was completely isolated and his wife was trying to get information to him. Because his wife was trying to get information to him, it created a fight with Lenin, who went as far as insult her and even insinuate some extramarital affair between Lenin and some other woman. Lenin got so mad and the whole situation stressed him so much that he was trying to write out some of his Russian supporters, one of them being a revolutionary leader. His name was Leon Trotsky. Unfortunately, uh, Lenin efforts were in vain and Stalin was just bringing more and more Russian supporter in the chamber of Congress. Lenin was still trying to write letters and send support, especially to the Georgian Bolshevik, but his efforts were in vain. And after writing a letter to the Georgian Bolshevik in March 6, 1929, he suffered a third stroke that left him completely paralyzed. He ended up dying the following year, January 21st. This gave the opportunity to Stalin to raise into power and became the following head of the USSR. So while Lenin was able to put in place some of the structure of the Soviet Union that he wanted, it also helped fortify Russian territory. Um, it was trying to maintain the independence of each nation, but at the same time, it was a difficult situation because Russia was such a big territory, so powerful, so proud, that it actually fortified the identity of Russia and isolated the other republic and forced them to develop and cultivate their own separate identity. That created even more tension and separation between each republic instead of creating like one homogeneous state that could live or like coexist together. And that was definitely one of the reasons that led to later on the fall of the USSR. On the other end, Stalin's ideas of autonomization became the backbone of the Union. On the other end, 
the republic didn't really have any more right and became more like regional parties with Russia basically overseeing everything and having power over all of the republic. So after Lenin's death, Stalin came to power in 1924. As soon as he came into power in 1924, he suppressed all political opposition and put in place a command economy, which basically means that the economy was fully controlled by the government. His policies created a really fast industrialization of the country, but it also forced collectivization and the rapid growth of the industry on one side also created the decline of agriculture on the other side. And from 1932 to 1933, his policies created actually a famine and millions and millions of Soviets died. On top of that, he also created Gulag. I don't know if anybody has ever heard about that term, but those are the government agency in charge of forced labor camps. So those camps were used for political repression. So any of the opponents were basically arrested and put in those gulag for forced labor. Some of them were even sentenced to death, and that was called the Great Purge. Stalin's goal was basically to remove all actual or perceived opponents through mass arrest and sending them to the camp or killing them. It was basically an era of political paranoia. Everybody who seemed to be an opponent needed to be arrested. People didn't really have any more freedom. Life became really complicated. Access to food became extremely complica complicated. All levels of government were controlled by the Communist Party and they had what they called the Politburo, which basically is the poor policy making committee of the Communist Party and they made all of the rule and decided everything for Russia but also for all of the other states. So this is how Russia reigned over all of the region for years. So from 1924 all the way to the 1930s, beginning of 1940s, Stalin was able to develop the region, definitely industrialize the, the region, but unfortunately, there were a lot of consequences as far as freedom, access to food, and access to basic necessity for most of the population. Years went by, and in 1939, World War II was declared. Even though Russia wasn't officially part of the war, they did sign a pact with Germany. And the goal of the pact with Germany was to divide Poland and the rest of Eastern Europe between the Nazis and the Soviet Union. Some of the states were Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. Both power, Germany and the USSR, were able to gain extreme power in the area. And even though Poland tried to fight, they were just not strong enough for the Soviets. The only area where the Soviets had a lot of resistance and had to fight really hard was Finland, because they actually moved toward Finland, but Finland ended up losing against them and the Soviets seized some of Finland territory. But in the twist of events, June 22, 1941, the Germans actually broke their agreement with the Soviets. That operation was called Operation Barbarossa, and it was one of the largest invasions in history. The Wehrmacht, I hope I pronounced that right, um, is the unified armed forces of the Nazis, the Nazi, so basically it's the Nazi army, took down the Red Army, Multiple battles followed that. One of the deadliest battles of World War II was due to that broken agreement between the German and the Soviet. And that led to the Battle of Stalingrad from August 1942 to February 1943. This battle claimed the life of 2 million people. The Soviet ended up winning against the Nazi as they were trying to take over Stalingrad in the south of Russia because it was a major industrial and transport hub and they were trying to get also access to the oil field. Even though the Soviets won against Germany, the price that they had to pay was one of the most devastating of the war. They lost nearly 25 million people. At the time, it was said that probably 60% of the population had lost one of their family members. And like, not the enlarged family member, but the nuclear family member. This is how bad this was for the Soviets. But that win over the German shifted the balance of power and the Soviets were able to advance in Eastern Europe 
pushed back the German all the way back to Germany and took over Berlin. The takeover of, of Berlin ended World War II, May 9th, 1945, with Russia one of the winners. But the consequences of that was the clear division of Europe between the Eastern Bloc and the Western Bloc. And the Eastern Bloc was basically dominated by the Soviet. And the Western Bloc was France, England, also the United States. Even though the war ended, the tension between both the Eastern and the Western side never really ended. And that's how we moved progressively from the end of the war in 1945 to the Cold War in 1947 between the Eastern and the Western Bloc. And by the way, the Western Bloc later became NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. That treaty was signed in 1949, and the goal was to basically unite all of the country in the West. The birth of NATO was basically due to the end of World War II and the situation created by the Cold War. Stalin died in 1953, and was succeeded by Nikita Khrushchev. He took over the power and decided to completely change what was put in place by Stalin, even put in place what they call the de-Stalinization and the Khrushchev talk. And basically his goal was to relax the censorship, the repression that was put in place by Stalin at the time. He released most of the prisoners that were in the Gulag and really switched the direction of the Soviet Union into a little bit more relaxed and free country. That also led to the really fast development of the USSR, especially when it came to the space race. It's under Nikita Khrushchev that the USSR took the lead worldwide as far as the space race and sent the first satellite and also the first human space flight into space. In the 1970s, we had a brief period of what was called détente, which basically means that the relationship between the United States um, and basically the West and the East was not as tense, but the Soviet Union sent troops to Afghanistan in 1979, and that basically revived the tension between both sides. In the 80s, under Mikhail Gorbachev, the last basically Soviet Union leader, new policies were put in place to open up the USSR even more to the rest of the world. He even had what he called glasnost as a policy, which meant openness and transparency. As much as he wanted to preserve the Communist Party, he also wanted to reverse the economic stagnation and open the Soviet Union to compete worldwide, economically speaking. The Cold War finally ended in 1989 with the signature of the Warsaw Pact. That pact was basically signed between the central and eastern countries. That is how they were able to overthrow their Marxist-Leninist regime. So on one side, we had the Warsaw Pact between the central and eastern country, and on the other side, we had NATO between the western country. So those two pacts basically created alliances on each side. It was also a way of creating a balance of power and some type of military alliance between each side. The signature of the Warsaw Pact ended up leading to the end of the USSR. Stronger nationalist and separatist movement broke out in most of the republic around um, Russia. And even after a referendum put in place by Gorbachev, which led to a vote in favor of the Union, the USSR was dissolved in 1991. After that, Boris Yeltsin became the first president of the Russian Federation, but a coup was attempted against him in August 1991. That coup failed and led to the ban of the Communist Party in the Russian Federation. All of the republic, led by Russia and Ukraine, declared their independence officially December 25th, 1991. So nowadays, the Russian Federation is basically recognized as the former Soviet Union, and all of the other states are called independent post-Soviet state. This is basically the story of how we went from the birth of the Soviet Union or USSR to its downfall and the birth of Russia and all of the country that we know today. Let me know if you have any question down in the comment. Let me know if you want to know more about some part of history that I've talked about, if there's something you want to dig deep in, or if there's just something completely different that you want me to talk about. 
Let's be back here next week with a video on some crazy fact about the Soviet Union before we move to the next step. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Bye!